I welcome everybody who is interested in science and today we talk about the first case when the police caught a murder based on the electrical activity of his brain. So stay tuned and you will know all the details. United Arab Emirates. This is one of the places where the state-of-the-art technologies are used in everyday practice by the government. Their police use supercars to chase the suspects and the firemen utilize water jackpot to combat the fire. Awesome. But what has happened during the recent murder investigation become a world sensation among one of the first cases when neuroscience helped to solve the crime. That felt good. Not good. Brilliant. Okay, let's take a closer look on what has happened. Of course, the complete technology is not fully explained, but based on the publicly available data, we can dig into the main principles behind it. I decided to split the explanation into two parts. In the first part, I will explain a few neuroscience concepts that were used for this technology. And in the second part, I will explain how these ideas were practically implemented. Okay, let's start with the first part. Our neural cells communicate with each other by the means of electrical signals. It may sound not that uh, intriguing from the first glance, but think about it for a moment. When you think, there are physical changes in the electrical activity of your brain. And these changes can be measured. In the sense, what sometimes is featured in the literature and some other social scientists as a kind of an abstract thing, like thinking, contemplating, pondering, can actually be measured. Here I'm talking about something real, something measurable in the biology of the forest. Okay, but how do we measure this electrical activity of the brain? Hmm, there is a matter, it's named EEG, standing for electroencephalography. So you don't need to remember this term, it's just more for the general background knowledge. So what is important is that for such recording, the investigators place electrodes along the skull and measure voltage fluctuations resulting from the electrical activity of neural cells. So basically, you do not measure the signal produced by individual cells, but rather by group of cells. Okay, and if EEG is measured during an event, for instance, during the execution of a task, it is referred as event-related potentials. So, potential related to an event, right? This makes sense. Thus, event-related potentials can capture the brain activity changes provoked by the task. So, basically, what you're doing, you ask a participant to perform a certain task and simultaneously you measure the activity of the participant's brain by the means of EEG. And this is how you capture the uh, changes in the brain activity provoked by the task. Actually, it wasn't that hard. <laughs> okay, this was more like a general background knowledge, but let's go a bit more specific. Event-related potentials, uh, or as we just discussed, in principle measurements of the brain activity during the execution of the task, can be used to detect different uh, responses to the presented stimuli. For instance, a surprise response. Surprise! In the experimental paradigm named oddball paradigm, researchers measure EEG from a participant observing images. So the idea is the following. Imagine, you have an EEG set up on your head, so a lot of these electrodes measuring the activity of your brain, okay? And then you are given a task. You're just staring at the screen, just normal monitor probably that you are just using right now, and it's just a black screen. And then on this black screen you can uh, be presented with one of two stimulus, either yellow balls appearing, let's say, eight out of ten times, and blue balls appearing two out of ten times. So the idea is one stimuli is more frequent than the other one. Okay, and obviously rare stimuli will cause more surprise compared to the frequent ones. I mean, imagine you're just sitting in this experimental room and then staring at the screen, it's like yellow balls, okay, yellow ball, yellow ball. Is it a blue ball? Whoa, man, it's a blue ball. Whoa, that's, that's a surprise. Okay, and, and this is this surprise response is measured. But remember, we also record the activity of your brain during the surprise. So apparently, there is a so-called uh, physiological surprise probe. In simple words, there is a specific pattern of electrical activity in your brain that is linked to a surprise reaction. Uh, it's named P300. So the idea is that the peak of this activity pattern uh, comes roughly 300 milliseconds after the stimulus presentation. So in brief, the amplitude of this P300 is higher, the higher the surprise, and lower, the lower the surprise. It makes sense, right? And in case of the uh, discussed oddball paradigm, uh, at the time I see the blue ball, the surprise is higher. Then the P300 amplitude is higher. And at the time when I see the yellow ball, the surprise is lower. Then the P300 amplitude is lower. So importantly, even if I decided, okay, I want a trick 
trick this uh, experimental and I hide my emotions Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know. and try to pretend as if I wasn't surprised by the event. Uh, the amplitude of P300 actually doesn't care about this and it still will be higher because internally I am surprised and therefore you can objectively, importantly, this is important, the crucial point, you objectively detect the surprise irrespectively of what the person is saying to you. I can read your mind. Yeah, really. Okay, now uh, let's go to the second part and let's discuss how this objective surprise detection that we just discussed uh, by the means of this P300 amplitude helped to solve the real crime I was referring at the beginning. Okay, there was a murder in the warehouse and the police detected a few suspects that could uh, commit the crime. But who was a real killer? Kind of obvious. <laughs> To find this out, the police conducted the following experiment. The suspects uh, were presented with the photographs. Most of them look like the pictures somehow related to the crime. For instance, the photos of the crime scene or the weapon. But in fact, most of these images have nothing to do with the investigated crime. And for instance, we're taken from the archive or from some internet resources. However, a certain percentage of the images were real crime scene photographs or the images of the murder's weapon. Therefore, for innocent people, all these images will look the same because they, they just don't know the subtle details. However, those people who were involved in the crime and know the details, for instance, the exact type of the weapon, they will identify these crime-related images. But how do we capture this intrinsic knowledge? This information is in the brain and obviously the perpetrators will not tell you because that will Im immediately expose them. The idea will be similar to just discussed oddball paradigm and is based on the surprise detection. And let's take a closer look on that. To capture this intrinsic knowledge, EG was recorded during the picture's presentation. So focus was given uh, to P300 pattern. Remember, this is a physiological surprise probe we just discussed. Okay, and uh, recall that most of the pictures are not related to the investigated crime. And then suddenly the picture from the investigated crime pops up. So for a criminal who committed the crime, therefore knows the difference between the real and fake photos, this will be a surprise. So imagine like a criminal is sitting, staring at the screen, and then like the, the image is popping up, nothing related to the crime scene, he's probably chilling and so on. And then like, whoa, this is a, this is a weapon, this is a weapon used. Therefore, it will be a surprise. And even if a murderer just trying to keep calm and show nothing, as we discussed, P300 doesn't care about it. It's linked with intrinsic knowledge, with intrinsic memory. And therefore, P300 amplitude will detect the surprise and it will be higher. Whereas for an innocent person who doesn't know the difference between the fake and real pictures, so he was just observing all these pictures and then, okay, no difference. And this is true. There is no difference to him because he or she doesn't know the details of the crime. Therefore, there will be no surprise and P300 amplitude will be the same for all pictures. Okay, and this was a general idea behind the method uh, used in this investigation, also called memory print technology. Of course, the exact details uh, of the algorithm are not publicly available yet, but based on the publicly available information and the knowledge that P300 was used, we can capture the main idea. So far, so good. But P300 was also proposed as a potential lie detector. And hold on here and just think about it for a second. For conventional lie detectors, people use what? The physiological parameters like skin conductance that change during the sweating, pulse, etc. Potentially, if you are in the well control of your body, like, I don't know, practicing meditation uh, or something like that, you can control these feelings. It's not easy, but it's possible. Famously, in the late 80s, CIA agent Aldrich Amos beat two polygraph tests while he was spying for the Russians by apparently just being super relaxed. However, the event-related potentials, so this P300, is a representation of an internal activity of your brain that is linked to the stored memory. You cannot control it. And imagine that now we're gradually receiving an access to such signals. We're gradually receiving an access to this internal thought. Is it that's like a mind reading? If he knows about it, then he'll be able to read my mind. Read it. Control it. Unhinged. I remember like a Harry Potter novel. So for those who haven't read it, probably the next few sentences will not make too much sense. But remember this occlumency part. Nah, Harry have not learned it. Uh, if he had, he would have lived. No, no, forget it. 
So in Harry Potter, wizards use kind of a, a spell to, to interfere with someone else's memory and can potentially read it. But there was a counter spell, right? There was, I mean, people could, uh, could protect themselves. Uh, but there was, what I'm trying to say, that was at least a defense against such mice reading, but in our case, it's not. What powerful technology, huh? Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. So what do you think about this development? Will it soon be a part uh, like of the routine crime investigation? Will it make our lives safer? Feel free to pose the questions in the comment section. Every comment will receive a response. And importantly, do not forget to subscribe to the channel, not to miss the new, cool, breathtaking scientific stuff. See you soon. Bye-bye.